Big Slick here and today's project is to repair a malfunctioning power display on a phase linear 700 series 2 audiophile power amp. As you can see this here is the left channel this is the right channel and the left channel is pegging the meter even with no signal input to it and the first thing I did was I checked the uh, RC 4558IC and I'd already replaced that two or three years ago and it was fine. I forget which channel I replaced it in. I went ahead and socketed and replaced those two ICs at the time just because I was already in here. And here it is. It was, it's either two or three years later and now we have a different symptom. It's pegging the meter on the left channel. And so this was a pretty easy diagnosis. At least I think it's easy. I quickly checked the transistors but I didn't suspect those to be a problem. I think what it is, there's leakage in one of these two display driver ICs. And what I'll do here is I'll fire up my curve tracer, also known as an octopus, and I will show you why I believe there is leakage in one of these two ICs. These are a little bit difficult to find, although not expensive. So I have to order these from China and it'll take around two weeks for them to arrive. So I'll show you what the symptoms are and why I think that's the problem and then I'll cut this off and pick this back up two weeks after the chips are arrive. Okay, here's the test setup here. We have the curve tracer which is actually built into this oscilloscope and I'm going to be connecting the ground simply to the chassis down here and the uh, test pin will go between, we'll be comparing the working channel on, we'll stick with this IC up here first. So we're going to compare this IC pin by pin to this IC. And again, we'll be going from working to defective. So I'm going to set this up. I'll explain what I'm doing at the same time. I will be showing only the curve tracer and you can see how each pin responds. Okay, I'm going to work backwards from pin 16 down to pin 9. I'll start out with the good channel. Pin 16, good channel. Pin 16, defective channel. Looks about the same. 15 good channel, 15 defective channel, 14 good channel, 14 defective channel, 13 good channel, 13 defective channel. So far everything's looking about the same. Pin 12, good channel, defective channel. Pin 11, good channel, defective channel. Okay, you see that? That's leakage. So that's why I feel that we have a de defect in the display ICs. And the issue is, I don't know which one of these two, because pin 11 is in parallel for both of these ICs. Most likely only one of these two are defective. But until I remove them from the board, I'm not going to be able to find out which one is the defective one. So the next thing I have to do is get my HACO desoldering gun and pull these ICs off of the board and we'll go from there and to figure out which one of these two is defective. I'm probably going to install two replacements, but since they're a little bit harder IC to find, I'm going to go ahead and keep the one that looks to be still good. And we'll be using the HACO desoldering gun, which so we'll go ahead and suck these off the board and I'll throw them on the curve tracer, which they will respond a little differently when they're outside of the circuit. This was an in-circuit test, so they won't respond the same as if you test them out of circuit. So what I'll go ahead and do is pull them out, and then we'll retest them and see if we can determine which one of the two has the leaky junction. Okay, we're back here doing the bench test on the uh, display ICs that I pulled out, and hopefully we can get everything into the camera shot here. This is what I think is the good IC, and this is the other one. Now, if you notice, this line up here, the top side of the trace, is starting to flicker. And when I hit it with freeze spray, there it is. You can start seeing the slant not as pronounced as when it was in circuit but I think what it is is this was a little bit erratic even when it was in the machine where every now and then it would work for a little while but usually it wouldn't and I think this is what you're getting right here 
and if you go to the other pin again it's nice and straight so you're already showing the leakage here and I think whenever I use the desoldering gun to pull these out just heating the pins temporarily made it a little bit better that's actually not uncommon there's times when you heat a component up or even cool a component and it'll work for a period of time and that's when it hasn't totally failed but as you see you can see just the slight rise on that trace versus the other one right there nice and level that is the difference here Okay, big slick here back again, and we're going to do some curve tracing on these UAA 170 ICs, and I'll show you which ones are defective, and I'll also show you a counterfeit AliExpress chip. First thing I'm going to do is show you the original IC that is good. I'll go sweep down the left side of these, starting from the notch, but skipping the first pin because that's the ground pin. Watch the display on the curve tracer. Pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, this is how they should all look going down this side. So now I'm going to show you a counterfeit AliExpress chip. It's totally different, not even, this isn't even close to a UAA 170. Pin 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Completely different. I actually bought a set of three, and all three of those chips test identical to that. They were all counterfeit, not even one, UAA 170. Okay, so now I'll show you two chips that I got off of eBay, which are correct valid chips. Pin two, same as the good original. 3, same as the original, 4, same as the original, 5, same, 6, same, 7, same, 8, same. Now I can show you the uh, second one of the ones that I got. I'll go down, down it real quick and you'll see it. They're identical. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They're identical. Now I'll show you the defective original IC. There you go. You see the leakage on the right hand side there, the way it's dipping off. You see leakage on all of these pins on the defective original one right there. But if you notice, it's still totally different than the counterfeit AliExpress chip. So we'll just forget about those from this point forward. Every one of these pins is showing leakage, except for when you get to the last three pins, they are looking pretty good because that's the way they're testing on all the other ICs. But those two, three, four, and five are all showing leakage. And there again, I'll go back to one of the original ones here. I mean, one of the brand new ones. Two, see how it's got the nice L-shaped? Three, four, five. So there you go. Now I'll test the good original again just to show you on those few. Two, three, four, five. So that was definitely the issue. This first IC on the breadboard here. I'll turn this up right now. That way you can see what I was going at. This middle one here was the counterfeit one from AliExpress. And like I say, this is defective, original, good original, counterfeit, and two here that are brand new off of eBay and even though they were from China they are the correct IC and if you sweep up the right side this is all consistent too but this identified the original IC that was bad and also identified the original IC that was good and it identified the counterfeit IC I'll show a close-up of the counterfeit one which is Mark Germany and I don't know whether all of them are counterfeit across the entire supply chain or whether this was just this supplier but I'll show you what my counterfeit ones are marked.
And by the way, I did try these socketed in the actual amp and no, they do not work. Okay, the ICs have arrived and I went ahead and installed sockets for the display ICs on this left channel and I installed the new ICs themselves. So now is the moment of truth. I'll go ahead and plug this in and I'll go, I'll try to put the camera here. And as you see, it's responding correctly. So I'll go ahead and put a signal into it now and uh, calibrate the left channel to the right channel. As you see now, the both meters are reading the same and they're tracking pretty close to each other throughout the entire range. So I'm going to go ahead and button this up and call it a project. Okay, it's all back together and as you see, the displays are both now reading zero as they should. And I'll go ahead and put a signal into it real quick. So there you go. Easy repair on a phase linear 700 series 2 audio amplifier that had a malfunctioning peak meter.